God wants us to play music. It's, we're going to see that this is a command all in the Bible. And we got a lot of space up here we could fill with all kinds of, you know, potential, you know, players, right? And the New Testament doesn't really talk a lot about this directly, but it does say, if you look down at your Bible in Ephesians chapter 5, it says in verse 18, I'll read, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So the Bible in the New Testament does teach us and command us to sing the psalms. So we're going to be looking at a lot of psalms tonight. You know, a lot of people want to discredit the psalms. So we're going to be looking at a lot of psalms tonight. You know, a lot of people want to discredit the psalms and they want to say, oh, that's just David or that's Old Testament, so it's irrelevant for us. And, you know, in, in some churches will even say, you should not have any musical instruments in church, but in, in, which is ridiculous in light of what the Bible actually says about that. And that will become very clear. And also I have here in uh, Colossians 3.16, go ahead and turn to Psalms. We're going to be in Psalms a lot tonight. We're going to be looking at the Psalms which in the New Testament we are commanded to sing the Psalms. Colossians 3.16, you're turning to Psalm 81. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So we are commanded to sing the Psalms so that we could learn what they are saying, the doctrine that's there. So that's our stamp of approval on all the Psalms we're going to be looking at tonight. And point number one that I'm going to be making here is God commands for musical instruments to be played. It's great that we all sing, and we should all sing or at least attempt to sing, right? Make a joyful noise, you know, do what you, you know, we should all sing. But I'm going to take it a little bit further than just singing with your mouth and I want to be preaching about actually playing a musical instrument, which could come in handy for some people like, I really can't sing at all. Well, you can play an instrument, right? So you can make a beautiful sound one way or the other, right? So there's hope, right? Or you could do both, right? You could work on both. That, that's the best, okay? So God commands for musical instruments to be played. Psalm 81, look at verse 1, where the Bible says, Sing aloud unto God our strength. There's the command to sing. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Verse 2, take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel. Well, that is a musical instrument. The timbrel is an instrument. The pleasant harp, we all know that one, another musical instrument with a psaltery. Three instruments. God is not asking here, hey, if you want to, if you feel like it, he's saying, no, do this. Take the psalm, take this music, take the sheet music I have, and play the timbrel, the pleasant heart with a psaltery. This is a command. God wants us, God is desiring for us to play musical instruments in church and in our lives. It's not just church, but especially in church, I would say, that is a great way to serve God and to obey this command. Look at, uh, go ahead and turn into Psalm 147. Just a little bit uh, forward in the Bible. Psalm 147, we'll see this command again. And we're going to see this command a lot tonight. I mean, I'm not going to make a point of it every time, but if you really want to, make a mental note every time we read a verse that's commanding for a musical instrument to be played, because it's ridiculous. It's just so, it, over and over, you know, it's just, you'll see it. But I'm not going to stop and make a point every time, because I'm going to be covering other things. This is point one. God commands us to play musical instruments. Psalm 147, verse 1. Praise you the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth down the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp. Another command unto our God. Sing praise upon the harp. So that's you, you're, you're singing and you're, you're in a sense singing with the harp, right? And it's a command here again. Just like, yeah, singing is a command. Well, sing on the harp is a command. Right? So and here's the point. I'm not saying if you do not play an instrument that you are in sin. Okay? I'm not saying that. 
And some people might not even be able to. You know, different people have different situations, right? But we are seeing this command in the Bible, right? It's not a suggestion. This is what God wants us to do. So here's the thing. Not every single person has to do it. If you say, well, I don't play, am I in sin? Well, if everyone could play but decides not to, well, at some point in time, doesn't that become a sin? Right? I mean, because if, if, if we could do it, like we have the ability, we just don't want to. We don't want to put forth the effort to do it. Right? We don't have, we're, we're too lazy. Or we're just too shy to get in front of people or whatever. Right? To be putting ourselves out there. Well, if everybody is doing that, well, we, got a, like, we got a pretty decent sized church here. Let's say we had an even bigger church, but no one played. We're just all a cappella. Do you think that there might be a problem with that? Now, you know, there's different sized churches. If you have a really small church and you don't have anyone, I'm not saying that that church is in sin or something, right? But when you got a big church, you'd think you'd have somebody in there that could play an instrument and even have a, multiple instruments, right? I think at some point in time, you're crossing a line at some point in time when you're just lazy or you're just not wanting to put yourself out there or whatever. But I'm trying to point out to you that God wants us to do this. It is important. And we, hopefully you can think in your mind, you know what? I think I could. And so I want to take up the challenge personally, right? Or maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I wish I could, but I can't. And maybe you have a legitimate reason. And so I'm not talking to you. But as a body, right, this should be our goal, to praise God. What's the point? To give glory to God. Don't we all love God? We read all these things. Look at all these things He's done. The, mag the magnificent, mighty power of God. His understanding is great and is infinite. Doesn't that sound like it's worth praising and glorifying with not just our voices, but with time invested into other sounds that could be made together to give God honor and glory? I think so. Matter of fact, I know so because I see it taught and commanded in the Bible. So somebody needs to take this upon themselves. And James says in James 4, 17, don't have to turn, you can stay in Psalms. We're going to be in Psalms a lot here. You can go ahead and turn to uh, Psalm 149, just a little bit forward in your Bible. James says in four, uh, James 4, 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. So, I mean, again, I'm not adding to God's word here, but at some point in time, this is going to become a sin for somebody because this is a command that could be broken. And if you could do it, but you're just like, nope, not going to, don't want to, don't care, but you know that it's a good thing for, that you could do, well, might be sin, right? And, you know, you be the judge of that for yourself. Uh, you know, you could ask yourself this question. If everyone did what I do, if everyone had the attitude that I have about all kinds of stuff, just in life, but specifically to playing a musical instrument or just in general, what would things be like? If everyone did what you did, how would this church be? Right? If everyone's church attendance was like yours, would there even be anyone in here? If everyone's soul in them was like yours, would we be having any salvations to report? Right? If everyone's Bible reading, you know, fill in the blank. But you know what? Same thing with music. If everyone decided to sit there like a knot on the log and just, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, we can't hear you. If everyone did that, how sorry are we going to sound as a church? Pretty sorry. We need to be the example. We need to try to do the things that if everyone did, then this church would be great. Christianity would be great, right? Same thing with music. Don't put that off. Don't put that on someone else. Well, there's already people who can play. All right? Well, no, we need more. Amen. We, we only have a couple instruments, right? And you know, that's great. And, you know, it's better than nothing. But, hey, how, how much more the merrier, right? Amen. More the merrier. And you know what? You might think, well, we don't really have that much room up here. You know, we can push the rows back. We can have people play instruments sit right here. Amen. Don't worry about that. I don't think Pastor Burr is going to have a problem with that at all. We'll make it happen, Amen. right? And, and we're going to get into all kinds of stuff related to this subject so we should have the attitude of, hey, I want to be part of the solution in all areas of my life. You know, he's talking about cleaning. Before I move on, you know, if everyone cleaned the way you did, how clean would this church be? How clean would this church be? 
If everyone picked up after themselves like you did personally, how much of a mess are we leaving behind? That's just for free. That's not having anything to do. That's just on that same line, though, of, hey, if everyone did, if everyone did what you did, what are we going to look like, right? Let's be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem, right? It, it, as much as we're able to, of course, right? Different people have different demands, different, different situations. I get that, but you, we should all strive to be a blessing and be a so, part of the solution, not a problem. And we ought to have the attitude is uh, we ought to have the attitude that says, "What's the best things I can do? Not what's the minimal that I have to do and not be in sin." And guys, that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about this subject of playing the musical instrument. It's like, well, yeah, man, is he saying I'm in sin? Well, let's just talk about what's the best attitude to have, right? Yeah. First Corinthians, you're in Psalm 149. I'm going to read First Corinthians 10:23, where the Bible says, "All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not." You know, you can do a lot of things. And it's, it's fine. It's not sin, right? But does it mean it's the best thing for you to do? Is it edifying? Is it expedient for you to do, right? That's, what, that's the attitude we ought to have, right? Amen. What's the best way I could live? What's the best thing I could do? Not, well, am I, am I in sin? Or is, you know, that's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong way of looking at it. Psalm 149 is where you are. Look at verse 1. Praise you the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and His praise in the congregation of saints. So it's not just you and your personal life. I know this is talking about singing, but don't worry, the instruments are coming in this chapter. This is for and intended for the congregation, which is what we are in right now, the congregation, the church. God wants us to sing in the, the congregation of saints. Look at verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in Him that made Him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Let them praise His name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto Him with the timbrel and harp in the congregation. And it says dance too. You're like, well, how are we going to dance in church? I dance in church all the time. You know, when I'm sitting here playing the guitar or I'm singing, you know, I do a little of this, right? You know, you got a little... That's dancing. I see kids dancing. You might dance too. I don't really pay attention to it. We don't have to have a bunch of sensual women doing whatever, you know, to have dancing. I dance. You know, even you know this right here. This is this is dancing. <laughs> I'm dancing right now. I'm fulfilling the word of God now. You know, but we also need instruments too. Amen. If we can, let's do it. Let's let's make church. You know, the best we can make it. Let's let's have this church like Pastor Burson's preached on a while back. Let's let's see if we can make this church as excellent as we can. Right? right. That way, when someone comes in, they're like, "Wow, this is a this is the spirit of God is here." Right. Leave, it, leave them with an impact. That way they can maybe handle the sermon, right? <laughs> you know. So, you know, why can't you? You say, well, I can't really do it. Why? You don't have time? Well, you could make time, maybe, right? Well, I mean, I just don't really feel like it. Well, that's lazy. Maybe you should just work and not be lazy. Obviously, you know, if that's your reason, maybe you just stop being lazy. Well, I'm just, I'm not lazy and I don't, I have time, but I'm, I just, I just, I can't handle being up here in front of people. It's just, ugh, I'm too, too shy, I'm too embarrassed, right? Well, you know, it's not really any different than soul winning. Most people go here soul winning and you know what? No one cares. You know, my wife plays piano. I talk to her a lot. She messes up. Oh man, I messed up. No one even, like no one even noticed. Right. No one cares because <laughs> yeah. when, when we're playing a song, Everyone's looking at their hymn book and they're trying to figure out what new song we're singing this week, you know. And they're trying they're just focused on them singing. They don't they don't it doesn't matter. And especially if they're not musical, they're not gonna pick up on it. So don't worry about that, right? Yeah. Just put yourself out there. It's just like soul winning. You know, sometimes when you serve God, you need to put yourself out there. Yeah, yeah. And just be don't don't be so, you know, shy to get out of your comfort zone, right? So and you know what? I, I bet you there are people out here right now that could play an instrument. Maybe they, like, they, they could learn right now. They have the potential, but they're, they're not doing it, right? They're, they're too busy, you know, doing something else, not redeeming the time, right? Or they're too busy, you know, watching whatever, or just something that's something else, right? You know, and I bet you there's actually people here that could play, like, right now but they're just 
not bringing it. They're not, they're not doing it. Like, they already know how to play, right? I don't know that. I don't know. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. You know, if that's you, then this sermon might be for you, okay? If that's you, this sermon is for you. Go ahead and look at uh, Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Remember, the New Testament said we are supposed to sing the Psalms, right? And this is for doctrine for us, okay? Now, look at uh, Psalm 71. Look at verse 20. Psalm 71, verse 20, with that in mind. Thou which hast showed me great and sore troubles shalt quicken me again, and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Praise God, we're all going to be raised again from the dead someday, right? So I'm kind of getting some vibes of why we might want to praise them about something. You know what I'm saying? Look at verse 20, uh, 21. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Verse 22. I... Remember, you're supposed to sing this, right? For doctrine, for teaching. I will also praise thee with the psaltery. I don't know what that looks like when you hold it, but that's what I was doing. I will praise thee with the psaltery. Even thy truth, O oh my God, unto thee will I sing with the harp. I know that one. The harp, O oh thou holy one of Israel. I'm going to play something, God. I'm going to praise you with my mouth and with my hands. I'm playing an instrument. It's kind of weird when you're like, yeah, I'm going to sing that, but that's not, like, I'm saying I there, but it's not really me. I mean, honestly, I think, this is, this is my opinion, I think everyone should strive or, and try to learn some instrument, at least some, at least the triangle, man, right? <laughs> you know, or the harmonica. The harmonica is like the easiest thing to play. So it's like the easiest instrument. And uh, we'll get into a little bit of that later, like different instruments, you know, the strategies for picking something in a minute or later in the sermon. You know, we're supposed to sing this, we're supposed to internalize it to ourselves, but we're just not even willing to do that? I don't think that's right. I think we should at least be willing. And if we can't, hey, you can't. If you can't, you can't. But if you can, and you're going to sit there and say, yeah, I'm going to sing this like the Bible says, but I'm not going to actually apply it to myself. And no, he said the psaltery. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing with the psaltery and the harp. Hey, that's more than one. That's not the same instrument. That's two different instruments. Hey, I'm gonna learn multiple instruments. I'm not just gonna learn one. I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna learn more than one. God, right? That's what he's saying. Hey, take up that challenge. If, if you already, hey, Devin, this doesn't apply to me. I already know an instrument, so I can just tune this thing out. Hey, do you know two? Do you know three? You know, just keep adding. You know, learn another one. Start with one first. Uh, verse 23, My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee and my soul which thou hast redeemed. Hey, this is going to make you happy. You do it, it's going to feel good. It don't take a rocket scientist to figure out. Music makes you glad. And it's going to make you rejoice. When you're singing about these types of things and you're, you're, you're fulfilling this musical part of yourself, it's going to make you happy. All right. Point number one, God commands musical instruments to be played. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody should do it. Maybe you should be that person to take that upon yourself. Uh, next point, play skillfully. Amen. Play skillfully. <laughs> Learn to play well enough to sound good at church. Hey, we want you to play here, but we're not, we're not that desperate, okay? You know what I mean? Like, we don't need a, a, something that sounds like a dying animal or whatever. Keep practicing. Everyone's going to start out sounding bad. That's fine. But before you bring it to church, though, to play for the church, get it to just a high... You don't have to be an expert. Just get it to a, enough of a level to where, you, you know, you sound like you got some skill, Right? And really, you should just keep getting more and more skillful in whatever instrument you play. And that would be singing and playing, you know. But specifically here, we're going to talk about playing an instrument, a musical instrument with your hands skillfully. Go to Psalm 33. You're, you were in Psalm 71. Go back to Psalm 33, and we're going to look at verse 1. Psalm 33, verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely. 
for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto Him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. So those are two different musical instruments. Sing unto Him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Don't, don't, don't be quiet. Get skillful enough to where you can play loud and it's not going to be bad. You don't have to worry. Man, i got to make sure. Sometimes, I'm not going to lie, I've had some songs where we pick and I'm like, I'm not really good at this song or this part, so I'm, like, I'm just going to play, but I'm, I'm going to kind of turn the amp down a little bit. <laughs> hey, work on the skill though, so you can just turn the amp up. That way, it can be loud. Because you know, I'm sitting back there just a minute ago and it's kind of hard to hear the stuff going on up here when you're back there. You know, I kind of felt like I was in timeout a little bit. But... <laughs> Hey, let's get loud so everyone can hear, even the people in the back, with our instrument. Let's get that skill level up there. Look at Psalm 137 in verse 1. On the same note, no pun intended, on the same note of playing skillfully and getting that skill acquired in playing the musical instrument, look at Psalm 137, verse number 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. And this, is, this is a psalm about, you know, in the context or the situation the children of Judah were in when they were, in, they were uh, in captivity from the Babylonians. And they're not really wanting to sing much about anything when they're in captivity, right? So this is kind of what's going on. We hanged our harps on the willow in the midst thereof. For there, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. It's like, look, I'm a slave. I'm not really wanting to sing about any, anything, right? It, you know, if you're married, then you want to sing. I'm not married right now. And then he says, you know, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand... This is the thing that you're using to play an instrument, right? Let my right hand forget her cunning. That's the skill. Like You're good at playing the harp, but you don't want to play it because you're depressed right here. But you know what? If I'm not going to be able to be in, the, in, in God's city here in Jerusalem, I, don't know, I, I just want to forget the skill that I have, forget my cunning, right? But I'm pointing out, hey, if you're going to play, have the cunning in your hand or in your left hand too. Have it in both, right? Have the skill. Play skillfully. How do I get skillful? How, how do I improve my skill? Practice. You know, mind blow, right? Practice every day. And you know, we even see this in the Bible. These, these examples we see in the Bible. Look at, uh, turn to First Chronicles chapter 16. We're going to look at the time of David and we got the guys who's like the, the, the Levites that are over the song, Asaph, and you got Jedithun, you got He-Man, not He-Man, you know, the blonde strong guy or whatever. He-Man in the Bible, he's way better anyways. Amen. So, First Chronicles 16.7 it says, then on that day, First Chronicles 16.7, then on that day David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. So, you know, David gives the, he writes this new psalm. He gives it to these musicians. Hey, play this. Put this to music. I just wrote this. Skip down. He gets into the psalm and then skip down to verse uh, 37. So he left there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren, to minister before the ark continually, as every day's work required. So this Asaph, who is this chief singer, and we're going to see here how they're playing instruments also. It's not just the singing. They're, in, they're before the ark playing, ministering continually as every day's work. That's a daily, continual service ministry that Asaph is doing. We'll get into the, what the, exactly that service was in a minute in case you're doubting me. But I'm telling you right now, he's playing a musical instrument. And it's not just him. Look at verse 38. And Obed-Edom with their brethren, threescore and eight. Obed-Edom also the son of Jedithun and Hosah to be porters. And Zadok the priest and his brethren the priest before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon. To offer, so this is what they're all doing, to, you know, collect, as a group. To offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offering continually morning and evening. 
and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. And with them, Heman and Jedithon and the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name, to give thanks to the Lord, because his mercy endureth forever. And with them, Heman and Jedithon, with trumpets and cymbals, for those that should make a sound, and with musical instruments of God. And the sons of Jedithon were porters. So these guys, they're, they're, they're doing this ministry every day. Every day, continually. They're playing these instruments. I bet you they're going to get pretty good. I bet you they're going to be able to have the skill and the cunning as a result. Hey, if you want to learn how to play an instrument, hey, play every day. Practice every day. Ta uh, turn to Psalm 98. How about you just practice for 10 minutes a day? 10 minutes a day every day. After a year, that would add up a lot. Mm -hmm. After a year, you'd be able to stand up or sit down and play something here. You'd be able to get to a skill. If you're playing for 10 minutes every day, well, I can't do it every day. Well, how about like a few times a week? Three times a week for 10 minutes. Pick, you know, that adds up. Do it for one year, two years, three years. Eventually, you're going to be able to get yourself up here if you're able, if you can do that. Why don't you do that? Why not? It'll make you happy. <laughs> you're, going to get, you're going to be able to rejoice in that. And you're going to be able to obey God's command. You're going to contribute to that obedience as a church here. And you know, we had a, a musical meeting here for all the people who were potentially interested in playing an instrument, right? About a, like over a year ago, right? And there was a lot of people here. I remember it was like the first couple of rows. Where y'all at? Oops. That was over a year ago. That tells me you've not been at least doing a little bit every day. Here a little, there a little. It ain't been adding up. And you know, maybe you got a legitimate reason. I'm not, I don't know your situation, but you know what? There's a lot of people here. They're like, yeah, music, let's play something for church. Hey, that's a great desire, but sooner or later the discipline needs to kick in and the work starts, right? That's what we need. That's what we're going to have to get if we're going to get to be able to play skillfully in church. Be consistent. Work hard. Don't be lazy. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Amen. Colossians 3.23, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Amen. Right? Maybe take a break from, you know, whatever you're doing that's not important, that's just a waste, and cut and carve out a few minutes every day, or every other day, or once a week, something, right? A little bit, it adds up, Right? You know, me, I kind of have an advantage. I play the guitar. It kind of works out for me because if I don't play often enough, the calluses on my fingers goes away, and then when I go back to play the guitar again, it don't feel so good because <laughs> you know? the strings, you know, they wear your fingers out after a while. So that's kind of a, a built-in, you know, uh, check for me. I had you turn to Psalm 98. Yeah. Play skillfully. That was the second point. The next point, God wants a variety of instruments to be played. Well, we got the piano. What are you talking about? We're not a cappella anymore. Hey, we want, God wants a variety of instruments. I don't know if you've noticed, but so far we've seen a lot of different instruments mentioned. And we don't have any of them. <laughs> so, you know, and some of them may not even exist anymore. We know it. We can get some other ones, right? Look at Psalm 98, verse, one, uh, verse 4. Psalm 98, verse 4. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with... The harp, with the harp and the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and sound of a cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. I'm going to read from Psalm 144, verse 9. Go ahead and turn to Second Chronicles 5. You're turning to Second Chronicles chapter 5. I'm going to read in Psalm 144, verse 9. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. That's kind of like a piano. It's more, we got more than ten on this thing. I mean, you can see all the strings. It's more than ten. But, you know, we got, what do we got listed? We got the psaltery. We got the trumpet. We got the cornet. I don't know what that is. We got the instrument of ten strings. You know, kind of like a twelve string or a six string or a however many strings we got in the piano. You know, what else? 
I mean, harp, more string. I mean, God obviously is interested in a variety of musical instruments here. Well, we already got a piano player, so I guess I don't need to worry about it. Well, that's not even true, first of all. But you know what? How about you learn something else? How about you learn the trumpet? How about you learn the cello? How about you learn... I mean, there's so many instruments. Learn the bass. Learn the French horn. Learn something. Something American, if you don't like French, right? <laughs> Ukulele, I mean, the gazoo, you know? Not the gazoo. We're not going to let you play with the gazoo at church, I don't think. That was a joke. <laughs> Maybe in your free time. Maybe as a warm-up instrument. Learn something. You know, we need a variety. And you know what? You know, Josh is very skilled, but he can only play one instrument at a time. Maybe he could play two. I don't know. You know, like the Mary Poppins guy, you know, get the, the, get the horn over here, and, you know, and got the piano, and you got drums on you and cymbals. You know what? We're, we're not, we don't need a one-man band up here. We need an orchestra. We need a string section. We need a brass section. We need someone who could fill in for the piano. Maybe an organ. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we don't have that we could have. And the only way that's ever going to happen is if you decide, I'm going to learn something. Amen. That's the only way. God wants a variety of musical instruments to be played. Instruments, the next point, instruments are pleasing to God and give God glory. And this is really the heart of why we should all really think about why we should do this, why we should learn. Because you know what? It gives God glory. And it pleases God. And we're going to look at a really cool story of this. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 5. Look at verse 1. Second Chronicles 5 verse 1. Instruments please God and give God glory. Let's look at the story about that in Second Chronicles 5 verse 1. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. This is the, the dedication of the, of, the, of the temple that we're seeing. And its completion. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold, and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Skip down to verse 10. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables which Moses put therein at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Verse 11. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not. Then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, that guy we talked about earlier, of Heman, also of Jedithon, the third man, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. That's a lot of instruments. I bet this sounded pretty cool. It's probably sounding pretty powerful, if you ask me. Can you imagine? I mean, one trumpet is going to blow you out the water. 120 trumpets? That's a serious sound right there. Amen. Let's make it happen. Verse 13, It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one. Again, they got the skill. Right? We need to have enough skill so we can all play as one. We don't need people doing their own things, not following the song leader, right? We need to all sing as one, play as one with all of us together to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. That's why we're going to sing. That's why we're going to play the instruments. And praise the Lord forever and ever that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. And I'm not saying that we're going to have a fog move in if we get all the instruments. That's not what I'm saying. But you know what? This is God supernaturally saying, hey, you know what? I like this. This is my stamp of approval right here. This is pleasing to me. You're obeying what I'm telling you to do. And you know what? That tells me we need to try to do the same thing if we can. Amen. Why? Because it gives God glory. Because He is worthy to be praised. Is He not? Amen. Is He not worth 10 minutes of your day every day? to learn an instrument so you can participate and be one of the 120 priests or whoever on the psaltery or on the harp or whatever instrument you pick. 
Is he not worthy of that investment? I think he is. Amen. If you're able to do it, if you can do it, why not do it? Why not contribute to that? It'll be pleasing to God. It'll give God glory. You know, we here in the the old I, uh, in the new IP, you know, we, I, in my opinion, we're way better than the old IP. Amen. We got the soul winning, right? We get people saved every week. We're getting how many? Who got, who got saved this week? One, two. You know, eh, you know, we got the Bible reading. We know our Bibles, Amen. right? We're reading it multiple times a year or one time a year or whatever. Even the layman, right? You know, we got the doctrine. We're getting deep into the Bible. We got the Bible studies, right? We got the preaching, the hard preaching, right? But a lot of times the music ministries are not as up to par, right? Look at the old IFB. And you know what? Part of the reason why is because they don't have what they should. You know, the most important thing is what we got. Praise God. But, and the reason why they have such good music programs oftentimes is because they forsake what really matters. And all they got left is the music, right? But you know what? Let's do it all. Let's, that, let's have it all. Let's be pleasing to God in all areas the best we can. Let's have the soul in him. Let's have the preaching. Let's have the Bible reading. You know what? Let's have all the musicians that play together. Amen. Let's not have anything lacking in our ministry here. All right? You might think, go ahead and turn to Psalm 68. Psalm 68. You might think, well, you know, I'm just I'm too young. You know, I'm just a little kid. So this, this sermon doesn't apply to me. Too young. Now, maybe you are too young. You know, if you're a baby, you're probably too young. <laughs> If you can't even talk or you know read, probably not going to be able to read music either. But if you're understanding what I'm saying, you're not you're not too young. You might say, well, "I'm too young," or, or "I'm a woman, so I got to be quiet and I can't participate in the service at all." Look at Psalm 68, verse 24. I can't play instruments because I'm too young, or I'm a I'm a lady. Psalm 68, 24. They have seen thy goings, O God, even the goings of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. The singers went before. The players on instruments followed after. Among them, among who? Those that, the players of instruments. Among them were the damsels. That's that's a young woman. Don't tell me you're too young to play. Don't tell me that you you know you can't play because you're a woman or you're a lady, right? Because they're playing with timbrels. They're following the people who are playing instruments, and they're the the young damsel, uh, the damsels. They're playing with timbrels. That's a, type, that's a type of an instrument. And that's not that hard to play. All right? It's like, like a, what is it called? Like a tambourine or something? It's just a little something. You just keep a beat. I mean, can you do that? Right? Amen. Hey, even the young people, even the ladies, it, it doesn't matter. You can Obviously, we have female musicians up here, so you probably already could figure that out. But some people might think, well, no, you know, I'm just, I'm too young, or I'm, I'm a girl... Or whatever, right? Don't think that. You can do it too. We're not going to have you preach or give your testimony, but you can play an instrument. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and turn to 1 Samuel 16. I didn't finish that in uh, Psalm 68. In verse 26, it says, Bless ye God in the congregations. So it's not just the damsels, you know, on the weekdays, you know, doing that at home. Hey, it's in the congregation. Bless you God in the congregations, even the Lord from the fountain of Israel. And you know, I had you turn to 1 Samuel 16. We're we are musical creatures. God created us to be musical. We hear a song, we like it. It affects us. It's very powerful. All right? What and that could be good or bad, all right? You know, we have our vocal cords that God's created us with, you know. It's kind of like God created, you know, Lucifer with the musical ability. He's not the only one. He created us with pipes too, right? We can produce music with just our bodies, right? We have a, a, a spiritual part of ourselves that God has made us to be like because He wants us to use that to praise Him, to glorify Him with that. So, you know, we don't want to deny a part of ourselves and neglect part of ourselves. And, and, and just I just don't play music. I don't sing. I just don't do none of it. I'm just a rock. That's it. It's like, no, you need, you're missing out. You, you were created to, to, to do this, to be musical. 
And some people are more musical than others. Some people are more naturally gifted in these things. I get it. But we're all musical, are we not? We don't say, oh, you're not musical. Oh, well, then you just don't sing. No, you sing too. All right? Everyone should be trying to get involved because we're all musical. We should try to be well-rounded. We should not just be specialists. Like, I'm just a soul winner. That's it. No, be a soul winner and be musical. Be a soul winner, be musical, and be smart. You don't have to just pick one. We need to be well-rounded. Okay? And we're going to look at David, who the Bible says was the sweet psalmist of Israel and a man after God's own heart. And I think he was very well-rounded. He's got a lot of really uh, different traits about him. Look at uh, Psalm, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 16. That's where I had you turn, right? 1 Samuel 16, look at verse 17. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, a Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing. There's that skill again. He can play an instrument and a mighty, valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person and the Lord is with him. This is a lot of really good characteristics. No wonder why he had all these women chasing him, right? No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, he's, he, what does he say? He plays music really well, which that's going to take time. I don't care how naturally gifted you are. You want to say, oh, well, that person's good because they're just naturally gifted. I couldn't do it. You know what? They're still going to have to put the work in. That's right, right? Everyone has to put the work in. Every, every, everybody. Okay? He's cunning. He must have been serenading them sheep, learning the music. Right? He's out there, you know, as a shepherd, right? And he also says that he was a mighty, valiant man. He's strong. Right? He's a man of war. He's tough. He's a prudent, he's prudent in matters. That means he's wise, he's smart. He's not a dummy that can play well and he's real tough. No, he can play well, he can, he's tough, and he's smart. And a comely person, he's good looking. And the Lord is with him. He, the Lord is with him. You know why the Lord was with him? Because he was righteous too. This is a lot of good things. These are the things we need to try to do, get for ourselves, right? Be well-rounded, Right? Don't just be a specialist. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, I know this is a little bit out of context, but the principle still stands that God wants us to be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. He doesn't want us to have some flaw or something you know, big missing in our character. And I would make the argument to say that, hey, God wants us to be musical. He's commanding us as a body to sing and, to, and to, to play musical instruments. So therefore, we should take the challenge on ourselves personally to be musical and to play musical instruments so that we don't have anything lacking in that area. Right? And, you know, and you know, no, notice a, there, there's a correlation that I'm going to point out here. There's, there's a correlation between playing an instrument and being smart. And th there's a reason for that. You know, I found this statement online about the, the benefits of playing an instrument on your brain. Because I'll just read it for you. Playing a musical instrument has been shown to increase cognitive ability through enhanced neuronal communication between the left and right hemispheres of the brain, resulting in positive effects on learning, memory, fine motor skills, verbal reasoning, and nonverbal reasoning, resulting in an overall more capable brain. It's good for your brain. It helps combat, you know, brain diseases when you're older, like dementia and Alzheimer's. It's good for you. That's why there's, you know, this guy, David, he's cunning on playing, and he's prudent in matters. Imagine that. Well, you know, there, there's some reasons behind that, right? And it, it kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with what Pastor Burson was preaching on last Sunday night, when he's talking about getting wisdom, get wisdom, right? Don't just get it in one area. Just get, learn, don't just learn the Bible. Learn all kinds of things. Just learn. Learn an instrument, too, on top of that. 
It's good for your brain. In uh, Psalm 49.3, if you're already in Psalms, I think you were in 1 Samuel, if you'd, like to, if you'd like to follow along, actually, you turn, you turn to 1 Chronicles 25. 1 Chronicles 25. I'm going to read this in Psalm 49. You're turning to 1 Chronicles 25, and verse 1 is where you're going to be. I'm going to read Psalm 49, verse 3, pointing out this correlation of being smart and playing an instrument here. Psalm 49, verse 3. My mouth shall speak of wisdom. And the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Verse 4, I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. See this correlation of someone who has got the wisdom and the understanding, and he's got the parable in his mouth. He's smart. He, he, know, he understands deep, complicated things. And he's singing about it too. right? He's, he, in his song, he's expounding or, or, or going through these, these dark, proverbial-type teachings, these deep things. So he's smart, he's understanding these deep things, and he's playing an instrument. Again, this correlation between playing well, being prudent, being wise, having that cunning on the, on the, on the harp. And then we just see the science that confirms it anymore. Hey, you want to be smarter? Some people might need this more than others, but hey, learn an instrument. And then you won't have to be maybe so dumb. Right? Uh, you know, I'm saying that kind of kidding, but, you know, seriously. And don't stop there. You know, this kind of goes again to what Pastor Burson was preaching on last, last week. Just be a learner. Learn music. Learn an instrument. It's work. I know it's work, but do it. If you can, do it. Okay? And, you know, you might, you might say, well, you know, this all sounds great, but I just can't learn. I can't do it. I just don't have the time. I just can't do it, can't fit it in. I, I have a condition, like maybe I just can't do it, right? Or my eyes, I can't see to learn, or I'm paralyzed, so I can't, you know, whatever excuse you could have that's a legit, right, excuse. Well, you know, maybe you can't learn, but why don't you make sure your kids learn? Amen. That's Amen. Maybe you can't. But hey, make sure your kids are learning, right? And, you know, the best would be, hey, have both. Try, try to learn yourself the best you can, and promote that with your kids. Have them do it. Right? And we're going to see an example of that in 1 Chronicles 25. Because, you know, honestly, when you're, when you're young, that's the best time to learn anyways. Learning an instrument is easiest when you're young. Still work, but the kids, they just soak everything up like a sponge. Right? Their minds. So, you know, provide that opportunity for your kids. Look at 1 Chronicles 25, verse 1. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jedithon, who should prophesy with harps and with psalteries and with cymbals. Again, these musical men that are playing these instruments. And the number of the workmen according to their service was... So these are all the people that are helping in this service, this musical service in the Old Testament under these men that David appointed... First Chronicles 25, verse, one, uh, verse 2, Of the sons of Asaph, so here's his sons, Zakur and Joseph, Nethaniah and Asrela, the sons of Asaph, under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied according to the order of the king. Of Jedithun, the sons of Jedithun, Gedaliah and Zerai, and Jeshiah, Hashabiah and Metathiah, six under the hands of their father Jedithun, who prophesied with a harp to give thanks and to praise the Lord. Of Heman, sons of Heman, Bukiah, Mataniah, Uziel, Shebuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliphaz. Here's some, here's some uh, you know, name ideas for all you pregnant ladies out there. That's why I'm reading this. You're welcome. <laughs> Gedaltai and Romam Taizer. Hey, that's a good one. It's my baby, Romam Taizer. Josh Be Bekasha. Malothai, Hothir, and Mohazioth, all these were the sons of Heman, the king seer in the words of God to lift up the horn. What are these sons of Heman doing? All these sons, what are they doing? To lift up the horn. That's not their mouth. That would be an instrument, right? And, and God gave to Heman 14 sons and three daughters. So we just listed off the 14 sons. We don't know what the three daughters' names are. All these were under the hands of their father for song in the house of the Lord with cymbals, 
psalteries, and harps for the service of the house of God. According to the king's order to Asaph, Jedaphan, and Heman. So the king's order. Remember David, the man after God's own heart? We just talked about him. He's the one who ordered this. I think he had the mind of God here. Amen. Especially when you see God like, yeah, smoke in, in the house of God when Solomon built that temple. He liked it. He's getting it from God. And He-Man, he has all these kids and, all, and, and, and these others, they have their, their children here. And they're not just playing it themselves. They're having their children play all these instruments. Hey, have your children learn a musical instrument. You know the best way? Monkey see, monkey do. What mommy and daddy do, the kids are going to want to do. But hey, if you can't do it, hey, at least try to encourage them in the, the best way you can if you can't give them that exact example right, of, of doing it with them. right. Try to have your children learn a musical instrument if you cannot, or have them learn it with you, right? Learn it together. So, turn to Psalm 150. It's the last place we're going we're gonna to read from. But I have some, some tips and some things I'm going to cover in, kind of in closing here. So, so I'm going to list off some uh, benefits of playing a musical instrument. Some of these things that we've already seen in the sermon, some of these I'm just going to be mentioning for the first time. Benefits of playing a musical instrument. It's actually a, a great form of stress relief. I mean, you, you kind of see uh, you know, this a little bit with Saul. He had the evil spirit. David played. It left. That's not exactly the same thing as stress, but it, it is stress. You do. <laughs> but just in general, you playing a musical instrument, you come day after a long, hard day, you know, you sit down, you read the Bible with your kids, play a song, pray. Hey, that's going to help you de-stress a little bit. That's going to help with some stress relief. That's just, just a practical tip. That's just a practical benefit. We all talked about the brain health, the, the fulfillment in music that you will have. You're going to be more well-rounded. You know, you're going to have this positive habit in your life to help keep you out of trouble. I mean, because if you're spending all this time practicing and playing, and learn an instrument, that's less time you're going to have to be doing the wrong things, things that are just dumb or sinful, a waste of time, right? It's a good positive habit. It's going to keep you out of trouble. It's going to help make church better. And that's kind of what we're talking about, right? You know, a big focus of this sermon. We're going to, it's going to make church better when you're able to bring your instrument here and play it in the church. Amen. It's going to, uh, let me see where I left off here in this list. You know, you're, you're doing your part to obey that command we saw, to, to play instrument. You're doing your part to praise Him. Okay, so he, here's some practical, those are all just benefits, that you, the, the motivations for, you know, why should I do it, right? You know, these are just a lot of benefits. I think it's uh, worth considering for yourself if you're, if you're not doing this. Here's some practical tips for learning. It's like, yeah, Dad, I, I want to learn. You know, you've inspired me. Hopefully somebody here is inspired to learn something and to take up this challenge or at least to start. Here's some practical, you know, uh, tips for learning an instrument. You know, picking an instrument. Here's some, you know, advice around picking an instrument. You know, think about the cost of the instrument, right? Some, some instruments you can get for free. So maybe you could take that in consideration. Depending on how much money you had or how much means you had, you could pick something that's free. You can, you can rent something. You can get something. You can get a cheap starter instrument. That's what I did. You know, I, I, for, for my very first guitar, I bought like a, a cheaper one, just a $100 guitar. You know, don't buy the most expensive thing. And then, no, just buy something, start to out this, uh, this cheap. Get your skill level up with that. And then if you're proving to yourself that you're actually going to stick with it and do it and you're able to play, then buy something nicer down the road. When you kind of earn that, and that's how I look at it, because I don't want to waste money on stuff, personally. But if you got the money to blow, you know, just do what you want. But this is just a tip, because I know a lot of people are not made out of money. Buy a cheaper uh, starter. Uh, pick an instrument that you like. Pick an instrument that you like. Like, man, I, I love the sound of the. Maybe pick that one, right? Pick an instrument you like. Maybe pick an instrument that's not so so hard to play. You know, you can look up, and I did this, you know, there's different instruments. Some are really hard to play. You know, the violin is considered the, the hardest instrument to play. You wouldn't think that. I learned the violin in sixth grade, and it's easy to make a sound, but it's actually hard because it's so easy to, like, be off. Because you can be off just a little bit, and it's just like, okay, okay. 
I think the cello is probably a little bit, I've never played the cello, but it seems like it'd probably be a little bit easier. It seems like there's a little bit more wiggle room with messing up on a cello. But here's another, here's another one. Pick an instrument you'll be able to actually practice. Maybe you drive a lot. I know like Brother Kevin, you drive a lot. Maybe you don't pick the cello because you're not, I spend all my days on the road, so it's like I can't really, maybe you pick the harmonica. Maybe you pick the trumpet, you know, and blast out at your window, you know. Pick something that you'll, you'll actually be able to practice consistently, right? You know, pick something that's actually going to be useful, too. Amen. Like, oh, I'm going to learn, you know, what's a, uh, I'm going to learn the drums. But you, I, I don't think we're going to have you play it at church. I mean, there's some carryover. You could play like, uh, what are the, it's like the keys. Help me out, Katie. You know what I'm talking about? What's your grandma play? The what? Vibra harp. That's kind of like a drum. Xylophone. Xylophone. So if you really, or the cymbals. So if you really wanted to like do something with sticks, maybe you could do that. But again, that's a big instrument. It might cost a lot. You can take all that into consideration. Pick one that's useful. Pick one that we can have played in church. You know, we got one piano player. Hey, that's great. But you know, let's pick something else. Maybe pick something that we don't already have something of, right? But I'm not saying don't play. The, don't learn. I'm not. I'm not saying don't learn the piano. Because we're always going to need a backup piano player you know josh is not maybe always going to be here he might be out of town you know it's just a matter of time probably before he gets kicked out for something i was kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding man but but seriously and you'd be surprised well in, in this church we may not have a need now but i bet you some point in time in your life you're going to be somewhere where there's a need and there's a prepared place for a prepared person my wife when this church started she didn't think she was going to be ever ever playing for the church but there was a need. It's like, we're a cappella and you play, so it's like, why aren't you playing, you know? Right? And you never know when that's going to be you. So go ahead and start preparing now because there's always times when people are sick and there's also, like, like I was saying earlier, we have the piano here, but maybe eventually a lot of churches do this. We also have like an organ, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever. But that, that skill, you know, all, there's, all, in all labor there's profit. Mm -hmm. So you can't go wrong, but maybe just think about what's going to be most useful, Right? when you're picking an instrument to learn. <clears throat> you know, m maybe you could pay for lessons. If you can afford that, pay for lessons if you can. Get free lessons on YouTube. That's what I did. Just teach yourself. You, there's, that's very doable. Teach yourself. A lot of free stuff, a lot of free resources. You know, pick, people, uh, pick people's brains that already know how to play instruments. Learn from people in real life. And just comment, there's people here that you know a lot of instruments. You can, I, I've been able to learn a lot of stuff on the guitar from Brother Jess. You know, so that that's that's another reason why we come to church. You know, we you know we get we help make each other better, and that's just another way in the musical area. You know, uh, they say, well, I can't play because I have a lot of little kids, so I'm stuck sitting with my kids. I, I'd love to play, but I got to sit with my little kids. You know, I'm in the same kind of a situation. My wife plays instruments. And I like to play every now and then. And well, we just rotate out. So maybe someone sit with the kids one service, another one sit with the kids the other service, and rotate out. And you know, husbands, if, if your wife wants to play, maybe you offer that if you can, right? You know, try to make that happen, right? You know, you might have to revolve around the suckling baby. Like, we, you know, we have to do that. Like, you know, hopefully Nathan's going to let Katie play, but most of the time he does. You play when you can. Right, And, you know, as you're learning songs, if you go home, you get an instrument, you're playing it, you're practicing it, as you learn, you, we got, you know, get hooked up with the schedule. We got all the songs scheduled in advance, right, for the month, for the upcoming services or whatever. And you can see, hey, this song's coming up. I can play that song. Well, come early enough so we can make sure that you got the skill and we can put, okay, yes, you can play for that song. It sounds good. And then you can join in for that one song. There you go. And then just start adding on to it, right? Another good tip, Brother Matt Adams' website. He, you know, he goes to Faith of Word. He's the, uh, the music man out there. And he has created, like, basically all the hymns in, uh, in our hymn book. He's got all the different, like, sheet music and, for different instruments. So you can get that website. You can, you can get the MuseCore, you know, uh, program. And you can have it all on your laptop, or you can use that to fill it out. Like for me, you know, guitar, I'm not really reading the music as much. I'm looking at the guitar shapes 
or, or the, the, the letters, like G chord or whatever. I'm not really looking at the notes. All that's already done for me. Hey, use someone like that. He's got the, he's got the trumpets on there. He's got all the different stringed instruments on there. Use that, you know. Ask somebody about it. That there's, there's lots of resources available. I know pastors offered many times in the past to work with people with getting them books that they could have. Talk to people. Don't let that be your excuse, right? Amen. But don't waste it either. Like, if you're going to get something that costs money, please don't waste it, right? Take it seriously. And I'm going to go ahead and close with Psalm 150 where I had you turn. This is just going to reiterate and just tie it all in a big bow, the things we've been talking about. The command, just, just all the instruments here, and why we should be doing it in our heart and why we should want to do it. I think Psalm 150 just encapsulates that very well. In verse 1, Praise you the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the ferment of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet, musical instrument. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp, two more musical instruments. Praise Him with the timbre and dance, another one. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs, two more. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals, another one. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals, another one. Are you getting it yet? Mm-hmm. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's try to do our part to praise the Lord and learn an instrument if you can. All right, I, hope this, I hope this sermon was encouraging to you or thought-provoking to you. And uh, maybe you'll take up that challenge for yourself or at least inspire someone that you think could if you can't, right? Let's let, you know, it'd be great one day if we could just, you know, see this whole front of, of, the, of the auditorium here just filled with just an army of musicians that just praise God with that talent. Wouldn't that be great? Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. pray that you'd help us all to, to just do our best to serve you in our lives in all areas, music included. And pray that you bless us as we go our separate ways uh, this evening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.